Okay, I'm going to now begin priming the Ravel's Imperial Star Destroyer. I'm going to be priming it all using Mr. Finisher's Surfacer 1500 Black. Uh, just adjust the stand a bit so it's in an angle like this so it's easy for me to paint. I'm going to start with the top first, of course. See how we got here. I have my reservoir full. Put it at 40 PSI's. And I'm going to I'm using my older airbrush for priming. I have to clean up something here. Alright, so far so good. I increased the PSI to 40 so I can get them on just as quickly as possible and just cover more distance. I don't want to like wasting too much time on the lower PSI's because that's obviously for for precision, but for something this, you know. I see my reservoir finally went. I mean the uh, filtering finally went through. It was giving, Always wear a mask, by the way. I have mine on.
so it's going to be good in there, so that way it's easy for me to... Oh, I ran out. Hmm. Good check. Yeah, I ran out, and that was all on top of this. Alright, so good. The top part is good. I'm going to wait until it dries a bit so I can flip it over. And then hit the underside. I didn't put the sticky tacks on the engines yet for these guys. I'm not, I don't have to worry about these. And then I'll paint the whole thing also. Uh, I should probably put something in there to cover up the speakers. I don't want the paint maybe to damage the speaker system. So let me do that. I'm going to wait until it dries first. And then once it's dry, we'll move on to the next color. Which of course is the off-white. So, as I'm looking at my Star Destroyer, now I dub it the Stealth Star Destroyer. It's now finally dried up and ready to be painted. And it's a shame. I really like how this came out. It's very, very wicked looking, you could say. Something that maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you guys want to make a better Stealth Star Destroyer. Just get this kit and spray painted black, but it looks really cool. But we're going to paint it number 69 off white just turn on the compressor a bit give it a mix give it a spray and let's see how this looks I'm going to give it a light pass first to give it an overall coat. I have a feeling I may have to give it two coats, but I just want to make sure I give it like a just a standard light pass. everything here. Ooh, can't do that in front of the camera. Just spray it to the back like that. I think my filter is already clogged up so there just use the remaining portion of the uh,
remaining amount of paint that I have in my reservoir. I took a liberty of continue painting without showing it off, giving it various layers. Think of this. Hmm? Pretty good. Paint job came out nice. Because then it's all white. And back here, let's. Well, I'll, I'll wait until it dries and then we'll review it without everything you're seeing right here. So, give me some time. Alright. There it is. Star, the Star Destroyer from Ravel is now fully painted. Not detailed up, but at least it highlights the black. Um, applying the white over it gives it the... Um, you see like some shading here and there. I made a mistake, which is not caught on camera, where a drop fell here and I couldn't wipe it off, so I tried to spray it over and over again. Um, it happened here and here, but... Either way, the uh, outlining of it came out pretty good, like around there on the edges, right there. It's not it's not as solid as it as it was, but at least you, you can, and and it gives it that overall depth look to it. Like look at there in the um, in the tower right there, that came out pretty good. The back area was a pain in the ass because obviously everything is all funneled to your face. So if you start spraying it, it'll just start hitting it. Uh, I think maybe I should have done was maybe um, taking a brush, thin it out with a thinner, and then just brush it, you know, dry brush it a bit. I could probably can do it right now, but it came out all right, as you can see. And uh, here's the uh, what it looks like with the lights on. I should have foresaw. <coughs> excuse me. I should have foresaw that even though this was a clear part right there, maybe if I would have found a way to funnel a um, fiber optic light over here so that everything, all the lights would turn on, that would have been great. Something for you guys to think about if you're planning to get this kit. The bottom area didn't look so good. Um, that and the fact that I ran out of weight, but. It had, it's all right to me. I mean, this one came out okay, and everything else. And then I rem I covered up the uh, these little speakers so it doesn't the paint doesn't damage it. And my custom stand is nice and strong. Right now it's in this position where the scar destroyer is pointing downwards. But if I want, I'll just pop that up, flip it, turn it around. Good. And it looks like that. little guy there and then if you squint your eyes you get the little forced perspective and uh, that Star Destroyer is only far back while well, this one's a little bit closer there we go alright this concludes the build of the Ravel Star Destroyer 1 4000 scale strange can't believe this is a 1 4000 scale I, I actually haven't had the opportunity to, s to do the math and get the original specs of the of the Star Destroyer and compare it to um, you know if it is one four thousand scale if you do the div division all that stuff but this also completes my uh, my model kit building of Star Wars for 2016 because pretty much there's nothing new coming out this will be released or sorry this is part of the uh, new uh, Star Wars movie called uh, Rogue One a Star Wars story and let's pull out some of the Star Wars kits here so you guys can see. Here's the AT-ACT. 
and this is of course the U-Wing fighter as I mentioned before both of these kits are one 100 scale I was like wow one 100 scale never thought of that now whether Ravel will continue on making some newer kits for well what am I saying yes they are going to be making more Star Wars kits for next year uh, 2017 when Star Wars Episode 8 comes out and who knows what we'll get. I mean, we'll probably have, eventually get the Millennium Falcon as a re-release and maybe the uh, uh, the new X-Wing fighters, maybe the new TIE fighters. But who else? What, what else will we see? Personally, I enjoyed this because I like capital ship model kits. I really do. Um, and I never got the Republic Cruiser that Ravel did a few um, more than a few years ago. And it would have been nice if they would have continued on, like with with the series, uh, maybe releasing um, the separatist capital ships. I wouldn't even mind if they do those support ships that's in the series Rebels, Star Wars Rebels. You know, there's that uh, support ship that holds four Tie Fighters, and there's that light cruiser that's just, before, you know, uh, a class below the uh, Star Destroyer. So I would love to see something like that, and you know maybe get a model kit of that. If, 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 well, whoever does it, right now Ravel is kind of in the lead with releasing unique vehicles like that, and Bandai needs to catch up and improve the quality. So I hope Bandai is planning to release theirs, but maybe at a much larger scale. Wishful thinking, I have no idea, but we don't know. We can only predict. And uh, let's see what would happen in calendar year 2017 for Star Wars model kits. Whether it's for Ravel or for Bandai, who knows. But for now, I give credit for Bandai for releasing this. Excuse me, correction. I give credit to Ravel for releasing this. So Bandai, step up your game. I hope to see a Star Destroyer for 2017. With that being said, I'd like to thank you guys all for watching, and may the Force Builders be with you. Have a great day.